What's up guys? Yes, we are back here in Chicago at Wrigley Field. We are outside Gower, Gallagher Way Gate and we are doing a behind the scenes tour today of Wrigley Field as all the legendary statues. So join us here at the Wrigley Field tour. Come with us, I'd like to go explore Wrigley Field ballpark tour. we get from people like sometimes they say it's bigger some people say it's smaller some people say it's greener we all look at it different guys if all of you seen this is on tv you got to come and check it out for yourself okay the second oldest ballpark in major league baseball easiest question all day what's the oldest ballpark in major league baseball Fenway. Fenway park in boston 1912 we were 1914. does anybody know the third oldest ballpark Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium, LA, 1962. So 48 years between number two and number three, folks. There's literally two original ballparks left. So let's talk about the one we're looking at. Funny thing about this place, it was not called Wrigley Field back in the day. It was not built for the Chicago Cubs. We had a man in town, his name was Charlie Wiegman. Now Charlie owned a bunch of restaurants, pool halls, movie theaters. If it had to do with entertainment, Charlie owned it. But what Charlie really coveted was a major league baseball team. Well, the Cubs had been on the west side of town since 1876, but they weren't for sale. The White Sox had been on the south side of town since 1901. They weren't for sale. So what does Charlie do? Him and his buddies get together and they started their own league. It was called the Federal League. In the Federal League, you had eight teams. Charlie's team was the Chicago Federals. So they started their first season in 1913. They played on DePaul University campus. It's about a mile and a half straight south of here. Did any of you folks bring the red line up here this morning? Okay, when you stopped at the Fullerton stop, right over your right shoulder is a soccer field. That's where the ballpark was. But Charlie was a big ego man. He was not going to play his major league baseball on the college campus, he wanted his own ballpark. Well, the Cubs were already on the west, White Sox already on the south, big body of water out here on the east side. So Charlie came. across the street, very iconic to Wrigley Field. There goes that L train, right on, right on time. Right. There's currently 16 buildings over there that have bleachers on them, 2,500 seats. Those 2,500 seats are not included in the attendance over here, they're completely separate. Of those 16 buildings, 11 of them are owned by WrigleyRooftops.com. They, they are not owned by the Chicago Cubs. They are not owned by Wrigley Field. They are owned by the Ricketts family, which happens to own those two things as well. They have a real estate company that owns those things over there. Those rich people, they, do, you know, they, got, they got it figured out, I don't know. But how do you get a ticket over there? You can get a ticket over there as an individual. A lot of times a corporation will rent out the whole space for clients or for uh, employees, but you can get a ticket over there. You go online, you choose which rooftop you want to sit on. They're very different. The one here on, on your far right, they can't even see the infield over there. They see nothing of the infield. All right, so you have to choose which one you want to sit on. The price varies greatly, depending on what time of year it is and who's in town. So back in April when Colorado was in town, it was so cold, maybe $100 gets you in over there. 
The cargoes were here about four weeks ago on a weekend. You couldn't get in over there for less than two, uh, for $225. Pretty expensive, why so expensive? The first two floors of all those buildings are apartments. People live in those buildings. You cannot sell alcohol in a residential building in Chicago, but you can give it away for free once they get to your rooftop. So that price is an all-inclusive price. So once you get up there, all the food and drink is for free. If you go, if you get into that sort of thing, you can put a pretty good dent in that uh, situation over there. But when I was a young man, there were no bleachers over there. I was watching games on WGN TV, just flat rooftops. You might catch a maintenance man over there once in a while catching a ball game, or maybe a couple guys might shimmy up their fire escape and go over there and watch the game. That's the way it was for a long time. But it started to change in the early 80s, especially 1982. We got a new announcer on this side of town. Harry Carey was his name. Harry Carey was a fun-loving guy. He loved life to the fullest, to a fault. Sometimes Harry was more interested in what was going on over here than the game he was supposed to be talking about over there. He would always have an executive producer. His name was Arnie Harris. He'd say, Arnie, let's see what's happening on the rooftops today. And the cameras would come across and pan the rooftops. So what do you think starts to happen? More people start showing up over there. Okay? The people that own those buildings, they start charging people to go on that rooftop. Next thing you know, you got a hundred people on every flat rooftop over there. Well, one of our tour guides, his name is Tom. He lived in Ridleyville for 55 years. He used to go up there as a young man all the time. One day he went up on a rooftop and there was an orange circle painted on the rooftop. And Tom looks at the building owner and he said, what's the circle for? He said, be careful, that's the soft spot. <laughs> Guys, if you learn nothing more from me today than this, if you're on a rooftop and someone says that's the soft spot, you might want to get off the rooftop, everybody, right? See, Chicago catches wind of this, shuts them all down. I think for two reasons. First of all, they were starting to make money over here. The city of Chicago wasn't getting any of that money. Oh, and it wasn't safe. It wasn't safe. So they shut them down. So finally, our world-famous bar and restaurant, Murphy's Bleachers, right over here in the corner, they buy this first beige-colored building. They reinforce the building and the roof with structural steel put up proper railings, proper bleachers, now it was safe. Now everybody else follows suit. But now we still had a problem. The building owners were making money, the city of Chicago was making money, but guess who wasn't making any money on this deal? The Cubbies weren't making any cash. They took the building owners to court. same spot for 110 years. It's the only major league locker room above ground. Why? When they built the place back in 110 years ago, they were afraid if they dug down, they'd hit water. Lake Michigan's only about six blocks away, so they put an elevator here, okay? So that's why it's up, all right? But 110 years of National League players. You can't name a National League player that hasn't walked up those steps, that's about it. The late, great Willie Mays, that just passed away about three weeks ago. He played here 174 games. He hit 54 home runs. Nobody has ever hit that many home runs as a visiting player again. Okay. Roberto Clemente in this space. Pete Rose, Johnny Bench, Stan Musial, and Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. 
a month later, he came here for the first time. We sold 52,000 tickets to that game. We only had 40,000 seats. 20,000 more people outside wanting to get in uh, Glenn's and Jackie Robinson. This is the last field standing, the last locker room stadium he ever dressed in. He never played at Fenway Park in Boston. Uh, so the greatest National League players ever sit in the same space you both are sitting in. 1932, we had a World Series here. We played the New York Yankees. Lou Gehrig could have been sitting right there. Babe Ruth could have been sitting right there. During that series, game three, one of the most historic home runs ever hit, Babe Ruth's called shot. During that game, Babe had already hit one home run. He was up a second time. The Cubs pitcher got him down to an 0-2 count. He started to heckle and chirp at Babe Ruth a little bit. I'm going to strike you out. Don't heckle Babe Ruth, everybody. It's just not a good idea. He stepped out and he said, I got one more strike. He stepped in with his bat, pointed to right center field. Very next pitch, hit a home run in right center field. Babe Ruth's called shot. Such an iconic home run that Luke Gehrig also had two home runs in that game. But nobody remembers that. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. But no, real quick. So this just this past Tuesday, two days ago, the actual jersey that Babe Ruth wore for the called shot was back here at Wrigley Field. They put it down by home plate. When we get done with the tour, if you want to see some pictures of it, let me know. I've got them on my phone. They're going to auction that jersey off. It's estimated as high as $30 million. <laughs> that tells you how important that's ever lived been in this space. The Chicago Bears played football at Wrigley Field for 50 years, 5-0. This is the locker room for the visiting team. So the greatest football player, the Johnny Unitas, is Jim Brown. Okay. Coach Vince Lombardi, the Green Bay Packers, I can picture him standing right here screaming at his players at halftime. Okay. One thing you have to realize that before 1990, there was a wall right here. So this is all there was. We won uh, an all-star game here in 1990. Baseball said, okay, you got to expand locker room. So we went all out and had this little, little space over here. So imagine this. 25 baseball players, coaches, trainers, press in this space. Now imagine 50 football players, coaches, trainers, press in this space. More often than not, they would come over on their buses fully dressed for the ball game, ready to go like I did back in high school over the away football game. Okay. If the Green Bay Packers were in town, our reporter George Hallis made sure the hot water was turned off in the shower. <laughs> they get right back on the bus and pull you over and go back to the hotel. The greatest baseball players ever, greatest football players in this space. The greatest soccer player ever lived, Pele. Well, Pele played for the New York Cosmos, played here a couple of times. He was in this space. The greatest basketball player in the history of basketball. I'm going to let you guys spin on that for a second. <laughs> Remember what city we're sitting in, everybody. Michael <laughs> Jordan's down here. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan took one year off of basketball and played baseball. He played for the Birmingham Bears, minor league team, the White Sox. Well, they brought him up for just one major league type game here against the Cubs for an exhibition game. They put Michael down there where Jim is. <laughs> you stand there. Those four lockers down there, because he demanded so much space because he was Michael Jordan, but there was so much press here. Michael, when are you going back to basketball? Well, thank goodness he did. So after he went back, he won three more championships after all. So the greatest athletes ever to live have been in the same space you guys did. I want to step in right here between, uh, in the middle of our tour. Like he said, I can't go in the, club, uh, the Cubs clubhouse, but I was actually able to go in the Cubs clubhouse a couple years ago. And here's a couple of uh, pictures I got of the Cubs clubhouse a couple years ago. Here it is. So yeah, the clubhouse is awesome. It's huge. So I uh, wanted to put in those pictures real quick in the middle of our tour. And now back to normal tour. Oh, man, it kills us. <laughs> we 
makes you feel like you want to go run or jump or something, doesn't it? All right, guys, that will do it here for the Wrigley Field Ballpark Tour. I really hope you guys enjoy. I had a great time on the tour. It is the number one tour I have been on so far. The Braves were number one in before today, so that beats it. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, quick fun fact about the tour. Once you're done with the tour in the Cubs gift shop right here, you get 10% off anything as long as you show the ticket. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. Enjoy. Have a great day.